Um, what is a PDBOA? Well, it gives you it gives you some. Um, where is it gone? It gives you some um, functionality that's pretty close to a mobile app, but it's not it's not fully there. And you know, with Bubble as well, um, what you would like is um, you don't get all of the functionality anyway. Um, for example, you know, offline functionality. Um, this is somewhat achievable. Storage, there is some ways, um, which I won't be doing in this session, you can access the local storage, but it's pretty limited with, with Bubble, partly because that's just how Bubble's built. It's an online um, online only service. Um, I know with the native mobile app, there might be some flexibility there. Um, it is cost effective, at least to get some uh, a better, a little bit better UX and UI at this point. Uh, I mean, this way it's free, but which I'll go through in the later on. There are some great alternatives in terms of tools built on top of Bubble that allow you to, you know, build out a lot of PDA functionality. Um, where I started one, but then you, but you do get push notifications, which is kind of cool. Automatic updates. This isn't new <laughs> for Bubble app users um but it is when you compare it to a native app um you don't have to push uh any releases via the app store in order to do an update it's still a website ultimately in a web app um so you do get that speed of release i'm just gonna keep checking back to uh our book uh, zoho chat uh for any questions why is it different to a normal bubble web? It's not too different. I mean, the, the key really is when you're looking at it on mobile, which you'll see, it's, um, you know, you remove the top toolbar. From the um, It kind of occupies the full screen. Then with some nice UX and UI functionality within bubble in terms of using animations, um, you can get pretty close to a mobile app feel, um, but without... Um, and secondly, it can also sit in your dock on your phone or not in your laptop. So that's like a kind of key difference. But it is it is a bubble app. It's not there's no I'm not there's nothing different about it. Um, in terms of alternatives, these are the three that I've heard of um, and used, and they're really good. I'm not I'm not trying to say don't use these. Um, there's a lot of the, with my client, it quickly became apparent. They wanted feature after feature, and I said, "Look, it's not gonna. Um, let's just switch to something and pay 15 euros a month or whatever the value is. That's gonna cost a lot less than me writing the code for this. Uh, so, but it was an early exploration in terms of how straightforward it was with with um, adding our own code, or adding our custom code. So I'm just gonna go back here just in case anything is being said in the chat." No, okay, so I'm going to just keep carrying on um, in case there's any, any issues. So next one. Uh, you've, you've also got the BDK, BDK solution, which, um, again, is really good. Like, it, it works. It's, there's a lot of support around it. It'd be interesting to know what happens when once the bubble native is fully out and being used um, in production. But... Um, this is a great feature, and this one with BDK, you do release it to the App Store. Um, whereas with a Peter Way, um, you don't into the official App Stores. And then, as one of the attendees just said, yeah, there's also Natively, which is a solution as well. There's going to be drawbacks in all these cases. Um, anyway, let's get down to the meat. So, first of all, I when my my first attempt was basically I just went to Claude <laughs> and I said I have a web app, but what I need to make it a PWA. And the two main things that you need, um, which was you need a web app manifest, which is a, a file that when the web browser access the site, it kind of tells it, hey, this is this is this is about me. Um, you need to behave in these ways. Uh, and then this server worker enables offline function. To be honest, that's probably not even used that much, but I just followed I just followed the steps. Um, and so you create this JSON file. Um, you, know, you create it in your in a text file or in cursor or an IDE, um, and then you also um, put this in the SEL section of Bubble App, and then you create a service worker. Which I'll show you my service worker, which is pretty basic. So in the app example, I have I just quickly create which of these support non SPM, which of these support a non SPM 
from what I, but it, it, it would still support it. Um, it would just open up. You have to tell it one to open up on a certain page. I'll show you here. Um, and then there's a scope, which, which scope is a bit tricky, but you'd have to really open up the scope, I think. So rather than, um, it's a lot better to do as a single page. Um, you might have to open up the whole paths rather than just having, say, forward slash app. Um, let me show you. So um, if we go to, where's my bubble app? Here. So I quickly made a bubble app or a web bubble app before, which is just like a task manager. But in the settings, and this is where it changed. So these are the three things here. And I'll, I'll, I will give the, I'll put the code, uh, put it in the chat maybe. One, you have to basically tell, um, tell the browser this can be web app capable. Um, there is a theme color, which is the kind of background color, and then the status bar is telling it how it can behave right at the top of the status bar. Um, there are three options to choose from, <laughs> which I just, which I was just trying to confirm. But you can have the default standard status bar, black with white or black translucent. But again, use use any of these um, um, AI tools to help you along your help you along the way. Uh, just going to go back. Nothing changed. Okay. Then. Um, if I go back to here, so you needed those two files. You needed the service worker and you needed the manifest. Now, those are included in the settings of your bubble app, SEO. And then at the bottom, you have hosting files in the root directory. So you put the service worker in there. And you can see the service worker, it's basic at this point. Yep, this doesn't even have, I don't believe it's even having the um, offline functionality at this point. Then, where is, where is, it, where is it included it? Um, I've also included the, but what I haven't included here, sorry, is the manifest JSON. Now, I, when I, my first version, I did. I just followed the instructions, flawed. But then I realized that this method meant that um, you can only have a dev or a live version of the PWM. So what I did instead was in the header script here, you can dynamically generate the, the JSON file. And then depending if the URL, basically depending if you're in dev or live, you can um, create a, a different manifest file, which means that you can have both, um, if you can see this, both a dev and a live app in, um, for testing, because it's really annoying. Even for Progressia, I don't know about natively, but even for Progressia, you only have, you can have a choice of dev or live. And so to get to the dev app, my solution was to add a button and then you, you, which goes to the dev application. And then now you can view the dev application that you're building within the, the single, um, icon, which, which is for live, which is kind of annoying when certainly when you've got a client, you're saying, can we test this? So, what the, the solution that I found with the oops, um, having the dynamically generated manifest file was you basically say um, when he's dev start here and when he's live start here um, and I'll show you what that looks like. So basically you've got let me just it's not going to be ideal this but um, this script here dynamic dynamically creates the the manifest file. Uh, sorry, and then dynamically loads it based on whether it's dev or live. I remember, don't know exactly. <laughs> and then same with same with this one. I have to change that one quickly. That's, that's the client's app. Um, one second. So this one. I don't think that's going to make much of a difference to us. But um, so when we have, so those, these are the free scripts. This one, if service worker is navigated, then you've got this one, which is loading the correct 
manifest file. And then this one, well, it's a single script. This one is dynamically creating the manifest file. And inside there, you can define if it's dev, this is what it's called. If it's live, this is what it's called. So happy ops, test happy ops. Now, I'm going to try and um, share my screen. So if I go to here. Oh, that works pretty fast. Let me just right. No more questions as of yet. I'm hoping you can see my screen when I do this. Right. And so now I have two two URLs, the dev and live one. So I'm going to go to the dev one. So this is what it looks like on on if I was looking at it from within the web browser, just I just put the link at the top so you can see it. Um, and then these are this is the app. Now it doesn't look great. Now if you click the the home page, uh, sorry the share button at the bottom, and then you have the, your options, you can add the app to the screen. And then as you can see, you've got the test happy ops option here, which is great. And so in my on my phone now I've got the the dev one. Not very clear, but it's, it is the dev one. Um, and then, as you can see, it kind of loads up the UX UI is better, and it's full screen. And it feels feels nice. This app's not. You know, I just quickly threw this app together, so don't um, question my design skills here. Then, so that's the dev app. Now, if I wanted to go for the live app, oh, not there. So this one. Now it looks exactly the same, obviously, but it's the live app. You can also have this to the screen. And now this one, you've got the happy ops, which is the live one. So as a for my scenario, I now had I can be working in dev, make edits, um, and then live is always there, which was a, a a little bit of a time saver when it came to working with the client because then they could I could just give them the the dev app. Um, and then they could see the changes before I had to push everything to live. Um, so really, that's the and that's the kind of UX you're going to get, which do look like native apps. But the, having said that, it's still missing a lot of functionality. Um, let's go back to chat. So I'll just do a quick recap on the on the sections here. We need these free snippets of code. Uh, what I'll do is I'll put it on the YouTube when it goes live actually. You can either create the two files, serviceworker.js and the manifest file here, or if you want the two, um, which is literally just a JSON file, so if I can find it quickly. Not the ideal. No, I just blew up my computer with this hundred and seventy megabyte JSON. Don't know what that is. Fine. Oh no. Get rid that. Apologies. Oh no. Oh no. Right, I'm gonna I hope that's done. I'm not gonna try and find that JSON file. Um this dynamically creates it. Make sure you update all these uh, nodes inside the JSON. Um, and then you've got, this is where you define this, the dev URL and the live URL. Uh, oh, don't do that. And then the icon, which is what you see on the mobile device that I just showed, I added that via the same hosting files in the root directory, um, add it to that, take the link, and then include it here. You have to deploy the app in order to to have the functionality work. Um, 
that's just something that you have to do. Um, and then that's really the nuts and bolts. In this, I've not shown you how to do. I've not shown you how to do push notifications because, again, I suspect you can do it all. You can add the code into the into the script, into the body or the header, and it would work. You'd have to connect that to one signal. But by that point, it was easier for the, for me and the client just to jump onto Progressio. But she got an idea very early on. Okay, what does it feel like? Can we get close to what? What we're looking for. Um, I'm hoping you can still see my screen. Um, and that's my demo. So, um, any questions? You need me to show you anything else? It is very weird this one. I, I can't hear anyone, but there you go. So uh, what's being shown? I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Cool, so that's good. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. The 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 simple things are this you need a manifest file. You need the um, service worker, and that's really the nuts and bolts. Um, it's just, um, and they need to go into the script section at the top of the bubble app. So, do a final one. But yeah, apologies if it was a bit quick. I, was, I figured I might be able to do it. It might be okay, but you never know. It might be too fast in the end. This is where the magic happens. So here. Um, I'll include those in the YouTube video. Done. All right. Yeah, I'll add it to the YouTube. All right. I think that's my that's my time done. See you later, guys.